This is what most of North America looked like 400 million years ago, a smattering of tropical islands, coral reefs, and open ocean under the hot equatorial sun. But how did Colorado go from this to this, and Kansas from this to this? Let's learn about the ancient continent called Laurentia, how plate tectonics has made its journey possible, and etymologies of the Greek and Latin scientific terms that define these phenomena. I'm Luke, and this is Polymathy. So what is today the continent of North America was once a very different place. It used to be the Paleo continent of Laurentia that I told you about in the Geology of Niagara Falls video. And it was mostly underwater in the Silurian period, a name taken from Latin Silures, an ancient Celtic tribe of Wales. Extending from about 443 to 419 million years ago, the Silurian was typified by a warm and stable climate, making for high sea levels and numerous island chains. The Silurian period was when the first bony fish appeared in the oceans, and vascular plants, plants that carry food in their tissues, began to colonize the land. The shallow ocean over the paleo continents of Laurentia made for the perfect depositional environment for carbonate rocks, like limestones. Limestone is calcium carbonate, and forms when calcium-bearing minerals dissolved in seawater precipitate. That is, they fall out of solution onto the seafloor. Have you ever seen the white sands of tropical islands? These are often made up of grains of calcium carbonate, the tiny fragments of the shells of dead marine organisms. Just leave these critters to cook under the Earth's surface for a few million years and you have yourself a beautiful new kitchen countertop. And that's what we saw in the Niagara video. The astonishing cliffs of that waterfall are made possible by the dolomite, which is altered limestone, originally deposited all across Laurentia in the Silurian period. Go see the Niagara video to learn how an ocean floor can become a glorious waterfall. The paleocontinent of Laurentia forms the Craton of North America. Craton is from the Greek kratos, meaning strength or might. Thus the Craton of a continent is the strong continental crust that has remained relatively stable for many hundreds of millions of years. Cratons have two layers. The shield, here in red, is the basement rock of the craton, kind of like the basement of a house as its foundation. And the shield is where the basement rock is exposed to the surface, while the platform, here in magenta, overlies the shield with the erosional deposits from the shield, forming sedimentary rocks. The teal color is orogen, from the ancient Greek roots oros, meaning mountain, and gen, as in genos, yignomai, genesis, that's yenos, yignome, genesis for you modern Greek speakers, words associated with creation. Thus, an origin is a mountain genesis, a mountain building event or mountain range. These mountainous areas are all relatively recent additions or alterations of the original craton. It's crazy to think that most of the mountains we associate with North America, like the Rockies, didn't form until the final days of the dinosaurs just a few tens of millions of years ago. Oh yeah, what is Laurentia named after? Well, that's from the Laurentian Shield, which is also called the Canadian Shield, the exposed primordial bedrock, right? And that takes its name from the Laurentian Mountains, from the St. Lawrence River. Sanctus Laurentius was a deacon of the city of Rome in the third century AD and was martyred in the Christian persecutions under Emperor Valerian. Laurentius is from Laurus, the laurel tree. So how do we know that Laurentia was at the equator in the Silurian period? Well, until plate tectonic theory became accepted in the latter half of the 20th century, the theory that posits that blocks of continental crust, the cratons, are slowly moving over the more plastically deformable asthenosphere below, it was a downright mystery as to why rocks found in the northern U.S. and Canada could have thalassinoides facies. Whoa, you say, break that down for me. Thalassinoides facies? So facies is from Latin facies, meaning face or appearance, and refers to the observable characteristics of the rock. In this case, the facies in question is thalassinoides. Well, what does that mean? Thalassa means see, and the id part, that little suffix, that means looks like, just as an android looks like an aner, a man. I am only an android. This root id is related to Latin video, I see. So Thalassinoides facies shows branching burrows of sea creatures and is characteristic of hurricane-free equatorial climate. Add to this the low latitude confirmed by paleomagnetic data. 
In paleomagnetism, rocks are studied that have iron-rich minerals, and these ferrous sediments... Bueller. Ferrous Bueller. <laughs> these ferrous sediments capture the magnetic fields of the Earth when they were deposited, allowing us to know where on the Earth they were formed. Amazing! Eventually, the epicratonic seas would recede. At the end of the Silurian period, Laurentia collided with another paleocontinent called Baltica, forming Laurentia, which later collided with the paleocontinent of Gondwana, forming Pangaea, the last supercontinent. After Pangaea's breakup in the Mesozoic, Laurentia isn't called Laurentia anymore in paleogeography, it's just North America, with Laurentia as its craton. Plus a whole bunch of new stuff accreted onto it. Which ancient continents or supercontinents would you like to learn more about? Let me know in the comments. If you like this, you'll love my other Earth Science videos. Thanks to all of my Patreon supporters for making this content possible. Rock on, my friends. Walete.